Hello and welcome to another video of creating 3D models using surface modeling. So this is referring to activity 6.1a uh, as you can see here. Uh, so why does one want to do surface modeling as compared to 3D modeling, 3D solid modeling? So uh, one thing that surface modeling gives you is actually the free form uh, characteristics and at the same time you can easily get the curvatures of all these rather quickly so if you dive in closely into the activity here you notice that on a, a overall view it looks very simple it's a very boxy shape but as you move further or analyze it further you notice that they are actually curves everywhere even the radiuses are slightly different throughout the edge and then from the curvature from one point to another point there are radiuses large radiuses within it so with that you can still do it in 3d solid modeling only thing it takes a lot more effort it takes more time just to complete it as per what you see in the drawing so for today let me show you how can we accomplish this 3D model using surface modeling. So let's take a look in our inventor. So this is our surface model for this uh, activity. So the idea is you form surfaces like such. And then once you have created more surfaces, you are able to create a solid body at the end of the uh, whole session so uh, this is actually a soap bar uh, and it has a very very nice curvature throughout very smooth all around okay so let's begin so first step control n let's go to our matrix folder and let's create a new standard ipt part file first step expand your origin folder under your model browser and on visibility for all these planes right so next let's begin with the overall top view so this overall top view let me reposition my view uh, in this pdf here the overall top view is a rectangle of 110 by 80 at the same time they have a radius of 300 on the short length and on the longer length is actually 500 radius so pay attention to the radius here so uh, on, on first look it may look like a rectangle just straight lines very simple but in actual fact is a actually is a very large radius uh, inside it so with that we can go into inventor okay we will use our top view to create a new sketch so select your plane the top plane and create a new sketch next let's project geometry of your center planes or center axis so this will will we'll create our main building uh, lines for us next from there we can create circles for it so one is here other one will be here okay the longer length this will be a shorter length and we just need to repeat again on the opposite side so with this we can on the opposite side we can create and for the top side it will be like this so just roughly get the shape first because we will be trimming it now okay next let's create them to be equal because the length has a same radius the breadth also have their own same radius 
Okay, so uh, from here you can still see that they are movable. So let's dimension those. So we know that from end to end it's actually 110. So let's do that. Let's apply a point here to here and we dimension it to be 110. Uh, one look, you can see that they are not symmetry yet. And at the same time, this end point or the quadrant of this arc here is not touching on our main axis. So let's coincide them together. Let's just check on the other side. Okay, good. They are over. Uh, they are coinciding one another. Now repeat. The radius for this fella on the short length is radius R three hundred. So let's just double check on the other side. Yes, it's also three hundred. Now let's do on the lengthwise. So this lengthwise is five hundred. Okay, you notice that it can go quite crazy. So let's just undo first and apply some constraint to it or some dimensional constraint to it. So again, let's repeat. Go to the quadrant, apply some points. And then make sure that the points coincide with our vertical axis now. And now we can dimension them together. This will be 8, 0, 80. And now, since we have better control, and our, as you can see here, our sketch are all fully grounded or fully constrained, we can change this to R500. Okay, so our, con our sketch are now, yeah, have changed to a bluish color and it has been fully constrained. And we can finish our sketch here. So this is our uh, the boundary of the shape. Now let's go back to the drawing again. So let me zoom out a little. If you can see from the short length here, it has a radius of 100. It's not a vertical straight line, it's actually with a radius of 100. Okay, so please take note of this. And on the other side, it also has a radius of 100, R100. So it means that the hundred is being or the radius hundred is being sweeped along the length wise and also the breadth wise. Okay, so we are going to use the sweep command. So now I will use this frontal view or frontal plane to create a new sketch. With that, remember the endpoint that we have created just now? We can actually project that point as a base so that we know that that is the curvature that we want. So let's draw an arc. Oh, before that, let me also start from the horizontal axis to uh, project the horizontal axis so that we can start our arc center point from the axis itself. Okay, from here, let's draw the version of it uh, of a certain length. And then let's constrain the point here to the quadrant of that arc. And this radius is 100. And if we go back to the drawing, uh, this has a height of 20. And then of course the other side is, looks very symmetrical. It is also 40 in total. So let's go back to Inventor, dimension it of the vertical height, 40. Okay, so let's just do a drag, uh, drag test to make sure that all are fully constrained. Let's rotate slightly, make sure that it's all good. Okay, so it's good. We can finish our sketch and we restart again this sketch on the other side, on the other plane. Okay, which is, on here is the end plane. So let's create a new sketch. Same thing, project our endpoint. Sorry. Endpoint, and let me just reposition my view and select my horizontal axis again. Okay. So start off with my arc, riding on the horizontal axis. And then just create 
a shape of an arc. Now coincide constraint from here to the quadrant. And again, the vertical height of this fella is 40 because 20 times 2 is 40. So I will reuse this height as a parameter for to, to, to give the height of this uh, R100 of the other view. Okay, and of course, this one is also R100. So I will reuse this 100 as uh, my parameter. So for surface modeling, if you notice, your sketch can get rather complex or very, yeah, you, you can have a lot of sketches, a lot of dimensions at the very beginning because you are trying to lay the footwork for everything, the surfaces uh, that you are going to create. So you must have a clear mind and you must somehow track what you have done and what you have not done. And this is important later on, uh, when you, as, you can, uh, as we move on, you can see what's, what it means by that. Okay, so I have created the R100 on the short breath and R100 on the lengthwise. So what I will do, I will sweep it along this curve and sweep it along this curve. So many will be asking, why can't I just sweep across everything? Uh, there is a R30 radius from our drawing. At the same time, we can actually just do one part of it or one side of it and mirror it across. So that's why it's important when you start off a drawing or, or a design, always check whether is there a symmetry to it. Because with that known, we can actually design your product right in the middle of the planes here of your software and you can mirror them across to simplify your workflow. Okay, so with that, we can finish our sketch and now we can try sweeping. So let's click on the sweep command here. So in sweep command, right at the top right hand corner uh, or for Autodesk Inventor, you can see that you can toggle between a solid model and a surface. So this orangey color is telling you that it's on surface mode. The blue cube is actually a solid mode. So let's swap it over. Now the profile will be this. And our path, let's click on here. You notice that we can also create one shot. Okay, this is possible. But let me show you another method just in case that you have variable radiuses, okay? So if your radiuses are the same for everywhere, uh, this method will work. But in a case where this radius on the short breath and the lengthwise is very different, let me show you another method, okay? So first step, you need to divide this path uh, uh, between each of a sketch. So let's create a sketch again from this plane. Okay, now we, what we need to do is just click on project geometry and project one of the path here. So what happened is we are using this guy as a profile and using this projected edge as our path. Now finish our sketch, we recreate another sketch on the same plane, project geometry again, and this time we will use it on the lengthwise click and finish your sketch okay so if you go into your model browser and hover on your sketches you have one path for this breath wise and you have a another path for the lengthwise of this sketch now with that i can actually simply off my original sketch so right click v or you just right click off the visibility here. Okay, now let's try again sweep. Click on sweep, select your profile again, and this time your edge. Just click on one of the sketch. Okay, why is it together? Let me try again. Sweep. Yeah. Let's right click, select others, and we can select our path or curve by itself, Indivi individual curves. And press OK. Sweep again, select our profile, and now we can select our path. So if you notice, 
there is a surface body folder that appears. So every surface that you have created, it will be consolidated in this surface body folder. This is good because you can quickly find what are the surfaces that you have created. Uh, you, I mean, some will argue like hey, you can still find your surfaces on your uh, model browser throughout the whole uh, features. However, as the as you go and work on your model, this list will get very long and it gets difficult to track on the different surfaces. Okay, so using this, let's just rename this fella. So and surface. I click again. And we rename this as our front surface. So we have two surfaces here. Yeah? Let's mirror them. So mirror, click on our surface here, and click on our mirror plane and press OK. Repeat the same method. Feature, right click, continue, and select our uh, mid plane for the mirror plane and press OK. So now we have a general shape of the soap. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, we are to create the top surface and the bottom surface. So let's check back on our drawing. So for this surface, means the top surface, yeah, either here or here, uh, you notice that it's a curvature and they are also symmetrical together. So from here the same, this one is also similar to the other side. For the plan view so it looks the same. Here and here they are the same. So the good thing is, we can simplify this design. We can just create one of these surface, generate them, and then mirror again. Repeat the whole process that have, whatever we have done at the uh, beginning when we created the end surface and the front surface. Okay, so the dimension for this fella, uh, we have we have this portion here that is flat. Okay, it, it didn't mention, it only gave you a dimension of 40, the full length of this. However, as you move on, there is this portion that is R200. So, take note, uh, it may be tricky for your, some of you. May, they may assume that this whole piece is actually 200. So how does one know whether is there a flat surface or not? So always check your isometric view. Sometimes they give you some information. Uh, if you have a R200, a fully a full arc of R200, you will never get these lines here. These lines are actually, or these edges here, they are actually a tangent edge. So to have that is always to have a flat surface and then there's a change of curvature which is the R200. Right? So that's uh, surface generation. So for this case, if uh, the question requires you to have these edges, which is edge of tangency, you must have a change of surfaces. Okay? So let's start. Uh, let's go back to our inventor. I will create a new plane on the vertical front uh, plane, a new sketch, sorry, then our project again, you notice the process is always repeating, project first to make sure that our reference are correct, and then we can draw a line first, right in the middle, let's constrain it, midpoint to this uh, vertical axis, and now let's constrain it on here to here, uh, it doesn't work, so let's project that edge. Okay, and now go linear here to here. Escape. Let's highlight this piece and change it to construction method. Now, we need a radius of 200 here and 200 here. So let's do that. So circle. Uh, this 200, they, 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 they did not mention as to where exactly it's supposed to be. Uh, what I mean by that is, where is this center? Can it, it can be here, but if you notice, if I were to bring that center here, this arc will never begin from this point here. So, you must uh, analyze the design and then try to move your uh, sketches around, just to make sure that you are uh, modeling correctly. 
So for this, it's here. Then from this edge, let's coincide them together. Oh, let's repeat again. Since I can't click it, right click, select others and select the point and click on this circle. So it will extend to that point here. Now click on front again. Uh, so let's check back the drawing. So there's a R200 and this R200 actually has an intersecting point with our 15. So this 15 is right to the middle of our model. So this is important because we need to find out what is that curvature. Okay, so let's go on. So we are here now. Uh, we need to get that sketch again. So remember this portion here that we have created? So let's right click on visibility for this sketch. So remember the R, uh, no, not radius. Uh, remember the dimension 15. So that dimension 15 is actually the intersection for this arc here, or the circle for this case, because I haven't trimmed yet. And this created R100 up at the very beginning. And this point of intersection is dimension to the horizontal axis, which is 15 mm. So let's uh, project that edge first here. And then let's trim off. Is it anymore? Here, here. And now we can dimension them here to here. And we change it to 15. Of course, let's not forget. This fella is R200. Now let's convert this to construction line. Let me highlight. Okay, it's confirmed now. It's still construction. So sketch number two here, we can hide off. So it doesn't obstruct our uh, viewing. Now we have created the radius at the top. We need to create on the opposite side. Of course, you can just sketch it manually or to simplify your process, let's just mirror your option here. So left click to select the arc and then click on the mirror line here and press apply. So one good thing about this is, of course, if you change the value, the other end of your curvature will also update. Okay, so it means you are keeping the parametric function of your model there. So with that, we can finish our sketch uh, for this model here, even though there's this curvature, right, it's actually not running horizontally or it's not extruded horizontally. There's a curvature to this top surface too, which is at R150. So we need to create that R150. So from here, the center plane, end plane, we will create a sketch. Project this point geometry so that we have an end point to it. Again, project our center axis. We need those. And now we can create another arc. Center point arc from here. Roughly gauge it. So if you notice the drawing of sketches now for our models are all just estimation or approximation. We don't need to be exact yet, and then afterwards we can apply dimensional uh, constraints uh, to it. So let's apply coincide to this and the quadrant of the arc. The width of this fella, let's dimension it. The width of this uh, shot, the breadth wise, is 80. Okay, and the radius here it's. 150. Okay, of course, this 80, we can reuse the dimensions from your first sketch in the overall design. Okay, so let me just double click, uh, right click, switch it on first. Okay, on visibility, double click on this 80 of my current sketch and apply it to my the main overall design. So when I change this, this fella will also change. So you do not get any error as you move on later on. So let's off it again, Press right click, press V. Now we have the length wise and of course the breadth wise design of the top surface. So in this, let's finish our sketch. 
we will create a sweep function. So let's sweep, select our path, and press OK. Okay, and it's looking better now. So if you notice for surfaces, it's just orange translucent surfaces. It gets very confusing. So don't worry. Uh, it, it takes a while to really get used to it. Uh, so for here, what's left, we just need to mirror that created, newly created surface. Right click, continue, select our horizontal surface, uh, plane, sorry, and press OK. So now we have six sides or six surfaces. One, two, three, four, and then the top and the bottom surface six in total and like a dice once you have these six surfaces and if you analyze it carefully they are all intersecting one another we are good to create a solid body now so with that we go into the surface area here we can actually sculpt them together okay so sculpt one select all six surfaces okay if you have correctly selected the surfaces and it forms an enclosed body inventor will actually preview for you how does it look like as a solid so when you see these green outlines those are actually the solid body so we can press ok now and you will obtain a grayish uh, model then, which means this is a solid model if you notice we have a new folder here called solid bodies now Let's apply our radius, which is R30 across all the corners. So fill it. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if you notice, I did not even rotate the model. We can just approximate where exactly the edge is. So with this, we apply, change the radius of 30. Okay. And now, for the best part, here, there's a variable radius. So let's apply on the long or the lengthwise is R10. And on the uh, breadthwise is R15 on these two surfaces. So let's recap. On these two edge and here and here, on the breadthwise is R15. And on the lengthwise here and here, here and here is the uh, R10. So go back to your fillet tool. Look out for this variable fillet. So click on it. Now select on our edge. So you notice nothing happened yet, but as you move along the path, they gave you a, a small preview of what you can press. And you notice if you go further at a point, Okay, at where they, uh, they, some edges intersect to it, there's a green dot. While at the other portion, there are yellow points. And again, if you reach at the midpoint, they give you another green dot. So what it means? So green dot means you are at a single point. So let me just click and so at least you understand what it means. Okay. Now let's delete this point. Now let's apply a yellow dot. So a yellow dot or the yellow point have, let's change this to 10 maybe, so at least it's easier to see. There's this extra function called position. So you can, let, let me just ver uh, vary it for you and you'll take a look. So let's change this to one. So when I change it to 0.5, it goes to in the middle of this edge here. So between this point to this point, they recognize that this edge has a mid area. So it gives you great control that you can control the position of this fellow. So maybe you want it to be at 0.6% uh, percent of it. Uh, not percent, sorry, 0 0.6 means about 60% away from one of the end points. So here they recognize as 0, here as 1. So in the middle just now 0.5, and then as you go 0 to 1, here is 6, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, blah, blah. And then you you know you know you get why then. So let's delete this portion. Okay, so for this point one, this is actually ten. Then let's click here again at another point. 
another 10. Left click here again. This is 15. So you just do a good flow to it. You can see there's a change of radius accessory. Click here and apply the radius again. 15. Here, 10. Here, another 10. Right? Okay, it doesn't want to click. So let's. Every time when you can't select, just click on the last point that you have here and just go back and click again the point. It should work. Another 10. We are almost there. Get to here. 15. And last another 15. So we have our variable fillet. So how do we see whether is it variable or not? You can actually just yeah, estimate and look upon. And you can see that this is slightly smaller than the one on the uh, breath wise. Press OK. So with that, I can actually mirror my command here and press OK. So sometimes when you are modeling things, uh, not, not just this uh, portion, you might not be able to mirror the variable fillet, just redo again. Okay, so we have obtained our sketch now, or no, our model now. So let's right click, switch off my planes, and this is your final product for today. So thank you and happy, happy trying.